Hey guys, uh, this afternoon after server maintenance and restart, uh, we're going to have a look at the new Lepest fight. Now, I did jump on and uh, jump in with a couple of the other guys from the guild. That was about, uh, I think, after another group of you had attempted Lepest. Um, I jumped on to have a look just to see what was going on to try and uh, check out the fight and it ended up being myself and two others uh, Cash one of them uh, to go and have a look at the fight so I could sort of see it for the first time in that uh, what I found was um, very much a similar sort of fight to the other the pest just with a few additional mechanics same as any MMO style game um, as long as you understand the boss mechanics we can then uh, figure out a, a game plan or a strategy to, to counter to counter the boss had a look at it um, I joined the fight with only about two minutes 50 seconds to go we did about 30% damage in that time with three of us uh, the main thing there was we just needed to focus on the barrel at the back of the ship so I thought I'd make a quick video uh, just to sort of have a look at uh, this boss so the second second attempt worked out a lot better and we downed him uh, on the second attempt um, the first attempt being joining in on the end of the battle with, with a little bit over to, or nearly three minutes to go anyway we'll jump in and go and have a look uh, at this new boss fight um, ship layout uh, wise, I think what I'm going to be running with is the long nines front and back uh, and Dardanelles on the side, which is my ship build 90% of PvE uh, stuff, including forts. The only difference being Fort Ooston, as you've seen. I'm going to keep it very much the same. Um, I think that mid range is going to be where it's at for Le Pest, from what I overheard of the guys trying it uh, in Guild for the seven of you. Uh, there's a bit of a gas cloud in close so we don't want to get too close um, but also I, th I just I failed the long nines over the twin winch but what I might actually do just to, to put it to the test first of all just off the discussion uh, on discord is try out uh, I might try the twin winch on the front um, but I still think my favorite and preferred uh, is going to be the long nines as per usual just that twisting between the front and the sides if you're doing it efficiently you'll always have a higher DPS if you run it in the calculators online as well you'll have higher DPS than the twin winch the twin winch is very handy if you want to sit at range and shoot but it's not the highest damage uh, dealer for ships um, it's good alternative for, for forts but again not necessarily the highest DPS uh, we'll have a look at it regardless. We'll jump in with the twin winch. Um, the other main thing uh, for this fight is going to be your uh, Le Potence uh, schematic. It's going to be a crucial part of this fight. And we'll jump in and have a look with that on there. So, uh, as usual as well, rigging station and uh, Black Prince, which again is 90% of what I run uh, most of the majority of the time. Anyway, we'll jump over to the fight and we'll have a look. Here we go, start of the fight. Just clearing up the last of these ads. When the fight started, the regular La Pest. I've got the twin winch ballista on the front. As you can see, as we were talking about earlier. Uh, to try it out here on the boss. You'll see that the damage is capped there around uh, 3,000 per shot on the twin winch on the critical points um, and you can see just there that the regular shots non crits about uh, 800 to 1,000 1,013 on that shot definitely decrease in DPS on the twin winch ballista yes you can sit back at range and hit it but you want that m sweet mid-range about this distance here from him uh, it's going to be outside of the green here and as you can see the first look here at the pulse as that pulse came out from him the barrel on the back 
became visible and became shootable. I'm in a poor position here to be able to get some shots on it. And now that that pulse is happening again, it's now going to disappear. And when it disappears, uh, one of the main mechanics to look out for is that green cloud. It happens every time the barrel disappears and when he pulses. So you don't want to be in close range when that happens. As you can see, that guy with um, the sandbook and the flame build dying relatively quickly. I wouldn't recommend the sandbook flame build for this boss. Uh, I think my weapons of choice are going to be two long nines on the front and Dardanelles left and right. The long nines purely for that uh, extra range, be able to sit in that mid range, um, you know, around five, six hundred meters. Give you time to be able to get out of uh, any green gas uh, and also be in a good position to be able to hit those weak points. The long nines will just do more consistent damage. Um, I think uh, shooting on the front and turning to the side. As you can see here right now, the twin winch is still only hitting for two and a half. Right on that sweet spot. So you can sit back and shoot with that. But I think you're going to get some more consistent damage with double shooting long nines and twisting to your port or starboard side and shooting the Dardanelles. I'll try and get some Dardanelles on the weak point again just to compare that damage. The Dardanelles all in instantly firing um, rather than one shot of 2800. Example of the distance on that green cloud. Just important just to start moving and just just stay out of the range of that green cloud. You die relatively quickly in that unless you're probably super tanky. And that's all this fight is, understanding these couple of these main mechanics. Uh, it's a combination of all of the old mechanics. Uh, from all the other Le Pest fights with a few additional things thrown in in regards to the weak point uh, and the green cloud being the, the main two additional mechanics and as we progress uh, in the Le Pest fights they just seem to be adding more mechanics as we go making it slightly more difficult still just need to dodge these mortars I like the middle sort of ground for that because you can go left and right and just do a circle around in between the mortar shots anyway um, it's not going close in, so it's kind of countered the old technique where everyone just sort of rammed into him and flamed him. So you can't do that anymore. Um, and that's it. That's uh, it's not a whole lot extra to this fight. It's, we're shooting the weak point on the back where it uh, spawns in and staying out of close range as opposed to what we used to do with Lepest uh, because of that, that green cloud. As long as you're focusing fire the barrel on the back of him whenever it comes available when he pulses like now as you can see the pulse there and the barrel is visible on the back getting those crits on there as you can see that damage from those Dardanelles 1500 per shot four shots all hitting it 
6,000 instant and then switching to your front is going to probably be the maximum damage. I think I'm going to just the slowness of the twin winch and for only two and a half. Uh, something like a long nines on the front there is going to be much more beneficial. I think two shots bang bang on the front with the long nines and then switching back to your Dardanelles is going to maximize that damage on that barrel when you're in that mid range. I think there's two techniques he could use for when he's aggroing on on someone. I'm thinking either you have someone set up as a snow tank with threat generation, um, both high threat generation weapons and the threat generation furniture and have them try and hold aggro as much as possible. As you can see, still working this guy down, even with these randoms not even going in to maximise damage on, or not paying attention to get in and maximise damage on the barrel. But running into me, running away from him when we should be going in a little bit to actually maximise damage. Even though we've got randoms here, uh, seven people total, we we'll, uh, should get this guy down. Just, just in time. I think uh, we've got a few people here. I did post in the world chat um, what to focus on with the barrel. I don't think everyone is doing that. I think there's three or four of us that are. Um, I think we've got five, maybe a sixth person uh, in the guild working together and really focusing on that and going in going in and focusing on the barrel when he's when he comes available like now and then just when it starts flashing before the green comes backing out to make sure you don't dive from that green I think he can 5-6 man this quite comfortably Interesting fight. I think for the majority of that fight, we had seven people. We've got an eighth person here now, but seven people. I think three or four of us working, for trying to really focus on on the barrel as much as we could when we're in the position to be able to do so. A couple of people kind of working against us position-wise, running away when they should have been approaching uh, to do damage on that barrel. But that's the fight. Uh, it's fun. A lot of fun. Got myself a fancy new firework and a cosmetic for finishing the fight. We'll have a look at that while we do a quick summary and recap of the fight. So, just to summarise the few changes, here we go. Plague Eater. Oh, it's not activating, although it might be bugged. I'll keep trying to activate that as I keep talking. Um, just to summarise the fight, um, new Plague Eater, very similar to the, uh, to the originals, just with a few extra mechanics you need to watch out for. First one is the primary target uh, to be shooting at is the barrel on the back, which appears periodically throughout the fight. Um, you can notice this through the pulsing effect from the ship. 
when he pulses uh, first the barrel will appear and then when he pulses again it will disappear uh, this second pulse when it disappears will also initiate that green cloud damage effect around the ship very much like uh, our armor that uh, uh, spawns the poison cloud when you brace uh, it's a similar sort of thing there's large damage in the area it's quite substantial you don't want to be anywhere anywhere nearby or anywhere close um, once he activates that so getting out of the way, of, the way of that uh, and really focusing the phasing in and out barrel on the back uh, of his ship and that's that's really it staying at a medium range um, in the video I started um, really disappointing here actually that this uh, this firework doesn't work so hopefully they fix that uh, in the video I started saying how um, there's two uh, potential strategies uh, for kiting him and staying out of the um, out of the green the first one I touched base on was with a tank a snow uh, with threat generation to hopefully hold his aggro as much as possible and just kite him around so the majority of people can stay behind the other the other option here would be to just bounce him around the players when you have uh, aggro on you heading north or south uh, alternating so if you get him first of all aggroed on you you could uh, head south leaving the other players to sort of be majority north um, and be able to shoot him in the backside when he changes aggro um, and changes to someone else uh, he will start heading towards that new player whoever has the aggro could go the opposite direction in this case north and all the other players could drift south um, and make sure we're hitting him uh, hitting him in the backside and rinse and repeat just keep keep alternating which way he goes depending on on who has the aggro that'll keep him a lot of the time um, with his back towards the majority of players so that they're in a good position to be able to shoot that barrel when it appears and in a crew working together that would probably be the most efficient way um, of doing this fight rather than having him bounce around everywhere like you saw in this video with uh, with a group of randoms anyway guys enjoy the fight <laughs>